this year's seniors that they selected such a genuine, kind, and great classmate to represent them. Throughout his four years at Baruch, Spencer Tibbles has been a leader in the classroom and beyond, who inspires others, faculty and students alike, with his passion and thoughtfulness. At this time, it is my pleasure to invite Spencer to the stage to share his parting words for the class of 2013. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Parents, friends, faculty, distinguished guests, and of course, the class of 2013. This, this is a great day, and it is a very special thing that all of you are here. The class of 2013, it was truly an honor to spend the last four years with you guys. I mean it, I truly, truly mean it when I say that I've come to love every single one of you out there. Everybody's quirks, hobbies, inside jokes. In a way, we've all kind of defined each other for the last four years. So by leaving Baruch, we're all leaving a piece of ourselves behind. Um, before I continue, I think we have a round of applause uh, to the dedicated staff here who have taught us and raised us for the last four years. These people have literally made it their life's goal to educate us and help us fulfill our own dreams and aspirations. I think that as we sit here, we can all agree that our staff has done an exceptional job. It might also be necessary to thank our senior teachers as well, who had to deal with us in our finest year. <laughs> Perhaps a quick shout out to Ms. Ross. Who <laughs> missed the first half of her year on maternity leave, which as many of the parents know, um, and teachers, is not a vacation, taking care of a young child. And she came back in our second semester, quickly waking up to the realization that she would now have to deal with about 100 young children, or at least young adults acting as young children, that's for sure. Now, I want to speak to you all a little about perspective. Perspective is a funny thing. Because we think, as, we think of perspective as someone's permanent outlook on life, how they view the world. We think that everyone's perspective is rigid, that it firmly defines their motives and actions. But conversely, perspective changes every day. My ideals, goals, beliefs, morals, they change every hour. Every time I learn something new from a teacher, or I read something in the news, or a friend tells me something about an experience. My perspective of this world changes. Over the past four years, we have grown a lot, both mentally and physically. Our perspective on the first day of school is so radically different than our perspective now as we leave school. Freshman year, we took our first step into high school, and it was like walking into a weird dream. It all seemed so surreal. As we met in the gym, or whatever that space is called on the first floor. <laughs> Sorry, Sash. <laughs> and some of us made small talk while others stayed in hidden corners. <laughs> I quickly noticed some of the quirks and oddities that made up the roof. For starters, as the teachers talked to us on that first day, I noticed other teachers would snap as if they were rushing them. It seemed pretty rude. I didn't learn until later that this is the famous trademark way, Baruch way, of showing agreement. And now I happen to do it in public places and constantly look like an idiot. 
Then we found ourselves surrounded by gym walls, covered in posters that had inspirational quotes and pearls of wisdom on them. Quotes such as, the fault lies not in the stars, but in ourselves. Or, don't brag, it's not the whistle that pulls the train. And then there was the famous, excuses build bridges to nowhere. But as the days went by, we slowly started to adjust. Some of us were waking up from what seemed to be a bad dream, and Baruch was becoming a substantial part of our lives. A handful of us joined clubs and teams. Everyone did their best to accept Baruch as their second home for the next four years. And what was our perspective throughout all of that? I suppose at that point, all, all we wanted to do was fit in, maybe it'd be cool to find some new friends, or just enjoy our time as much as possible in order to make it all go by faster. And now, all of you sit here before me in your caps and gowns, with your families sitting here baffled by your achievement. And isn't it amazing how much different your perspective is? For you all, life isn't about the trivial things like being cool and following the status quo anymore. Baruch has instilled in you the ability to see the big picture. Now, all of you truly look forward. Receiving a great college education, getting a job, creating a family, all these things we value most in our society are right around the corner. And all of you have been prepared very well. But before you leave here today, I'd like to change your perspective one final time. Since I began this speech, the USA emitted roughly 57,000 tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That's 6 billion tons of CO2 every year, and it's slowly destroying our planet. Since I began speech, an American soldier has been fired upon and possibly wounded in a war whose causes are ambiguous and whose costs are momentous. Since I began this speech, about 12 people in the U.S. were diagnosed with cancer, still a disease that lacks a true remedy. Since I began this speech, 55 kids around the world have died of starvation, and yet Americans still waste 40% of the food they buy. As the generation that is responsible for holding the weight of the world on our shoulders, the generation that literally determines the fate of our Earth, always, always remember that the actions you take in life hold the power to drastically change the course of another person's life. You've all seen the big picture. I said it before. The education, the job, the family, and eventually death. But why not look bigger? In life, you can either hurt people or help people. Hundreds of thousands of graduating seniors are being told the same exact thing across the country. Making a change starts with the individual initiative and ends with a collective consensus. The list of the world's problems could go on forever, much past the environment, wars, disease, and famine. But at every corner of the world, there are people who attempt to take a stand, and there are people who put their own greed above the well-being of our Earth. As you all prepare yourselves for a career over the next four or more years, always keep this outlook in the back of your mind. Are the things you do in life ultimately for your own personal gain, or for the benefit of the people around you? Class of 13, congratulations. It's been a crazy four years. We've been given all the tools. Now let us be the generation that progresses the course of our history for the good of everyone that shares our world. Thank you. Spencer for those thoughtful words. Next, we will hear the vocal talents of our very own Carl Kasitsa.